Welcome everybody. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Sunderland School Committee on November 14th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Uh, for store of business is the minutes. We'll conclude the minutes of October 12th, 2023. Second a motion. Second from Joe. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, do we all have to do roll call for hybrid? There is or only if you can do it just a person online thing. Okay. You know I mean, so you can say go ahead and then Amanda has to say. Okay. So in person. Yeah. Minutes. I, All right. Four in person. Amanda. Yes. Approved. Approved. Five zero. Uh, what should the minutes reflect? It's just a vote. Yeah, just I mean, five zero. But all five. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a normal vote, but you have to have a verbal confirmation from the person. No, but when we're a normal vote all in person, I'm no longer putting a roll call for every single motion. Oh, no, you're you're fine. Just do yeah. no, no roll call? No. Just put, all, put the roll call out. Okay. All right, moving on to financial statement. All right. <clears throat> so 16 warrants were signed, totaling $119,918.55 since the last meeting. I did send you out the expense reports. There's nothing new. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. Uh, the one thing that I did want to put our rate on the radar is that uh, we will see some budget savings. I don't have the exact calculation yet, uh, but we do have a teacher on a leave of absence um, that will be primarily unpaid and the substitute coverage is taking place from an in-house staff member. So there won't be an additional cost of a substitute, which is really where the savings is. Usually if someone's on an unpaid leave of absence, you're paying the sub in their place. Um, but in this instance, Ben was able to use internal staffing. So uh, I'm still working on the calculations with payroll because a portion of the leave was paid and a portion is unpaid. So um, probably more to discuss about that at the next meeting in January. Uh, rural aid numbers are in since the last meeting. I don't think we had those last month. Um, Sunderland is receiving $53,922. You remember our conversation we talked about needing to cover that uh, transportation of a student who is um, deemed homeless right now and residing in Sunderland but going to another school district. So we have set up the purchase order with that fund, um, which did you really have? No. Oh, sorry. Um, so positive side, we have those funds available. Negative side is, you know, we talked about your using your aid for uh, budget offset. So we'll have to continue that conversation. But that is up significantly from last year's number was only $12,536. So we're seeing a significant increase there. Uh, and 25 planning for next year is still underway. I talked about that a little bit last month. Uh, ben and I actually meet tomorrow to discuss his budget requests for increases or changes. Uh, and then we'll continue the conversation with Darius, Ben and myself over the next five weeks or so, and hopefully come in January with the first draft for presentation. So I have. What was the, can you read the number on the warrant again? Yep, uh, $119,918.55. Great, thank you. 16 warrants. Yep. Yeah. I just have a comment on the rural aid, uh, particularly because Joe Comerford has been circulating a little chart of how much rural aid increased for different districts. The reason on her chart that Sunderland sticks way, way out on the bar graph is that uh, because we had a, our, our student population is right on the cusp between tier one and tier two of rural aid. So we had just enough fluctuation for a slightly lower student density per square mile to qualify for additional rural aid. Anybody asked you about that? That's the reason. So that could be reversed, you know. We could definitely flip back to tier two with a few more students in town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have seen that fluctuation over the last couple of years. Right. 12 to 5 was the lowest that it's been in the last several years. So it absolutely can easily have a big impact. I mean, go back to 19. Some of them was the only one that got really right. Yeah. Oh, and from here, we're like, no, just I think it started off just, just the first school, school. Yeah. and the rest of the district, too. <clears throat> that might have been the very first year, that not just the first they, they redefined. Yeah, yeah, that was four thousand dollars, you know, yeah. 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 that almost paid for the reports you have to write saying what we're going to do to regionalize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where can we read the definitions of the tiers? Uh, I can point you to it later. It, it's um. You put it right here. Right? Yeah. Okay. On the desk website. That's oh, the I, know I, that's I know right. I found it that's there. Right. Do a search on rural aid, and what you end up with is a spreadsheet that then gives enough definition to each of the categories. Yeah, no, there actually is a page on the desk website that just has the basic definition, and then you can yeah. download the spreadsheet. Or I've got the spreadsheet already formatted on the rural school website. Yeah, okay. yeah. I just sent the link out to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Shelley? All right, well, thank you, Shelley. Moving on to the principal's report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so last Thursday, November 9th, Sunderland Elementary School held its 14th consecutive Veterans Day observance ceremony. The ceremony this year was a little bit different uh, as due to weather, we held it in the gymnasium. We had guests from the Color Guard uh, from the University of Massachusetts, Westover Air Reserve Base in Chicopee, and VFW Hail Clap Post 3295 in South Deerfield. The guest speaker this year was Mr. Kenneth Cushy, Cushai, uh, Sunderland resident. Uh, Mr. Cushai provided a heartfelt message to our students that focused on positive ways they could serve our school community. Uh, Mr. Cushai uh, was in the U.S. Army uh, with a focus on multi-engine fixed wing repair. He was honorably discharged in 1968, um, where he, he was in Germany, and uh, he reached a rank of specialist E6, which meant he um, did maintenance on large aircraft. So we're really appreciated, uh, appreciative of um, uh, his attendance and, and the message he gave. And the second thing I have on the report is our social emotional screener. Uh, so our school mental health team led by our school psychologist, Vicki Palmer, and our new adjustment counselor, Jillian Buck, uh, recently helped to facilitate um, the beginning stages of a universal tier one. And by tier one, I mean all students across all grade levels, K through six, um, a universal screener for social emotional health. Um, the formal name of the screener, screener is the Devereux Student Strengths Assessment, also known as the DESA. And it allows us to assess in eight different competency areas including self-awareness, self-management, goal-directed behavior, social awareness, relationship skills, personal, personal responsibility, decision-making, and optimist, optimistic thinking. The way the screener, screener works, um, classroom teachers, and typically you um, administer the screener in mid-March, mid to late March, after the classroom teachers have known the students for six weeks or so. The, the teachers um, and those that work most closely with those students answer a series of eight questions. And it's this is online based. And depending on where the results from that screener um, fall, it will then up, open up to a, a larger set of questions if a, if a student um, is flagged at needing a little bit more support. Once all those results come back, um, that will allow us to uh, target skills directly, whether it is a full class lesson, small group, individual one-on-one -on -one support. This tool also comes with teaching, uh, a big uh, catalog of teaching resources. So if, if the results come back that, you know, hey, this first grade class is really struggling with problem solving, then that can be a message or an area focused on by the classroom teacher um, in morning meeting or a separate lesson at some point during the day. If if there are other areas that that are flagged, then those can could be addressed in either a small pull out grade level group or individual one on one sessions with either our school um, either of our school counselors. Mm -hmm. And um, not on the report that uh, I sent out yesterday. This earlier today, we had our third monthly community meeting of the school year. The meeting today was led by our fifth grade uh, teachers and students. 
And this is the one of the ways that we're trying to build community and connections throughout the school year. All of the students uh, or all the classrooms rather have classroom buddies. And so they, the sixth graders sit with whomever they're paired up with, fifth grade, whomever, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. So it's really positive um, uh, atmosphere and, and climate for, for everyone involved. So we got them. Can I ask about the death stuff? That's yes. Good. So is that, um, is it budgeted? Is it, a, is it an outside source? But who's helping provide all these services? Yes. So, um, we, I mean, yeah, we are, um, we have a, a grant we're using to pay for it this year. Uh, Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's around $8 a, $8 a student. And, um, so yeah, it's coming from the, which grant is it? The, uh, um, the mental health grant, the mental health grant. And is yeah. it purchased through, is it a, a, um, a company that does this? Is it like, with the little company that we use this? Community, like, community aperture, aperture. Yeah. And just the last question, I mean, yeah. with Vicky, say, uh, if Vicky's not here next year, who takes over the lead in that? Is that a different discussion? Is this grant, and is the grants that we've done every year? So that grant, the grant came from the district level, okay. right? And so, you know, this is the first year, Deerfield has used this screener for a few years now. This is the first year Sunderland is, um, is using it. And once the initial results come in, we're going to sit down with our in-house instructional leadership team and kind of plan, plan next steps. Um, but yeah, this is kind of be, this is being supported by both um, Mrs. Palmer, school psychologist counselor, and Julian Buck, our new school adjustment counselor. Just because it sounds great, I want to make sure it continues each year. And if it's a year by year grant, just have to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to say I think it's great to got Ken Kushi to uh, come speak. Uh, he's been in Sunderland for a long time and been involved in Sunderland town activities for a long time most recently for health and the more connections we can make you know one way or another or whatever with people in town that might not otherwise feel a connection to the school the more it helps us uh, uh, in maintaining the good support we do better I appreciate that feedback he had a chance to visit classrooms uh, yeah, that's really cool that's classrooms. great time and, uh, realize, and, and to your point he's um served as assistant dog officer, dog officer, zoning board of appeals, um, board of health, everything. He was even on the, he spoke of being on the uh, Sunderland police department. And when that, they didn't have cruisers at the time. So they just took the red light and threw it on the top of the pickup truck. <laughs> and he just said, Santa Claus, he told me, you know, I mean, it does do so do much more of a chat. Well, yeah. Thanks. I know it's awesome for them. Yeah. I just had one other question about the <clears throat> the screener. What is the what is the student's understanding of what they're answering in that context? So it's not um, it's not the teacher asking a student questions. Okay. It's the the teacher filling out the form okay. after having known them for six to eight weeks. Okay. So, yeah. And again, so we've we completed the initial eight questions for, for all of the students. And um, for those that came up uh, needing a little bit more support, we'll have have those answered by Thanksgiving so that we can review them at our leadership meeting after the break, taking the next steps. Um, we would like to provide the community with an update uh, come, come January uh, as to where where we've gone with it. Mm -hmm. um, ben, I have a question if I can. Um, on that, are you informing, as you identify these students that might need a little extra assistance, are you incorporating the families at all? How are you reaching out to parents and, and kind of bridging that gap between school and home with what you're finding in the classroom? Good, good question. So it is a it's a universal screener, right? So every student in in grades K through six are are 
being assessed using this tool. And, you know, whether it's uh, academically, uh, social, emotional concern, at any time there's something significant that would come up, we would absolutely um, reach out, reach out to caregivers with that. Thank you, Ben. Uh, next is public comment. We've got this wonderful gallery of empty chairs here in the library. Would anybody online like to make any public comments? No, thank you. Actually, Jessica, Jessica, I would, uh, sorry, this is Lisa Gaylor. I just wanted to thank you for explaining the chart for the rural aid, because I had looked at that and wondered those same questions. So thank you. It really jumps out when you see that chart, which I know Senator Comerford has put on Twitter and in her newsletter, and I've had constituents ask me about it. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Given public comment, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, recognize the passing of Louise Law, um, who passed away about three weeks ago now. Um, and Louise was an instrumental uh, administrator in our district and really is one of the uh, people who really moved the curriculum in all the elementary schools forward, was passionate, um, and just is just really missed. And so we just wanted to recognize her. Thank you. Move on to unfinished business. We have three policies up for vote tonight. Megan, you worked on the policy subcommittee. Do you want to say anything about these? these particular policies. I mean, when we were meeting in the in the subcommittee, we went through a lot of these different policies. Um, the ones that were just reviewed and updated, we kind of passed along easily, but these are the ones that we, or some of the ones that we wanted to bring to the committee for further review. Great, thanks, Derek. Do you wanna add anything? So th this is the... Uh... This, this is the, so this is the second reading of these, and these are the ones regarding purchasing and procurement. So that's getting us in compliance with the law. Great, thank you. Um, anybody want to make a motion? Or I, got, I got a question. Yeah. Um, policy, the new DJE, which deals with the um, threshold procurement and with the possibility of not having for for 100000 it wasn't clear to me whether by approving that policy, we cause that to go into effect under some circumstances or whether further action has to be taken by either the school or the town. We are already doing it. So that's because you know, the law. And so now your policy is being combined with the law. Because there were three things on the second page that seemed like different ways that it could be processes by which it could be put into effect. And I didn't know if you know, it, it, it sort of looked to me like there was something that still that needed to be done after we approved the policy to allow it. Change the procurement policy to decentralize the procurement function so that the school government can conduct its own procurement process. Would you use that more? Well, I don't know what the three things are, but I, mean, I could decide. Someone got their procurement license. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically the school can operate separate from the municipality and make purchases under a hundred thousand without having to go out to bid. The municipality cannot do that. So that's all the language is saying here. There isn't anything further that you have to do unless you didn't want to follow this and then you wouldn't adopt the policy and stick but, to hundred thousand. You could say between fifty and hundred thousand. We meaning you might have to be the proper procurement officer for it because the town would not be allowed to do that. Correct. Yes. And the school does its own procurement and when it's large projects with the town, but anything under a hundred thousand, we would just buy on our own following the okay. guidelines, which require three code, code yeah. state contract, all of those pieces. Right. Okay. So basically it just, it used to be up to 50,000 before right. between 10 and 50, there was a certain criteria. Now it's between 10,000 and a hundred thousand for schools. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Looking for a motion on these three policies. Removed. So we approve, uh, I guess, both to approve the policies in the second reading. Second. 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 Second
policies DJ, DJA, and DJE. Looking for a second. Second. Second for Megan. Any discussion? All in favor in person? Four right. here. Amanda? Passes okay. five zero. Thank you. What would y'all like to tell us about MCAT? Good Laura here. Uh, were you able to see the yes. the yes. packet? Um, I will point out a couple of things and then take questions if you have any. Um, we performed on the whole, just slightly better than state average in all categories. I want to point out that Sunderland received a rating of um, substantial progress towards goals. And um, model schools get that rating. And I looked into why, and it's mainly the math. Um, scores increasing, and in particular, increasing, increasing for students who had performed poorly the year before. That progress towards goal is um, the state sets a goal, and um, we exceeded what they thought would be the progress this year. Um, and it was particularly in math, and math for students who had been performing low than historical. So I thought that was worth mentioning at school committee. Um, I think a couple of things that stand out as strengths about Sunderland scores are um, steadily improving over the last three years. Um, the student growth percentiles are high um, amongst students with disabilities as well as students without disabilities, and that's always good to see people growing at equal rates. And um, there is less of a disparity between boys and girls at Sunderland than is typical statewide this year, and um, that's another source of success. Um, Sunderland and the whole district um, had a specific goal in improving student performance on the essay questions. And in all of our schools, those scores increased. And third and fourth grade um, performed significantly better than state average, which is particularly important with third grade because I know we have a small sample size, and this is a test that's best understood um, over time looking for trends. A trend across the state is that third graders did um, um, not as well as expected. And, the commissioner was looking at that because of the effects of the pandemic and um, grades three, uh, four and five tended to go up across the state and it seemed like some of that lost learning was recovered, but grade three across the state was hit hard, um, still not recovering. And so it was interesting that some of them did well. Um, we are always in every school watching the gap between low income and non-low income students. And we are always looking for um, gender, uh, uh, disparities, um, but we are still seeing some closing of all of the gaps that we're interested in. Um, I think it's a good time to mention that with the new curriculum in ELA this year, it's typical not to see progress um, right away it's because it's the first year of, of teachers learning the curriculum, so the, the progress may be slightly slower, if not necessarily, but it could be it could be the, um, the benefits of students being in the same program and having consistent routines and vocabulary and lesson structures over four years. The benefit will probably show up in three to four years and not in the first one to two years, even though we'll always just watch with interest and see what happens. Are there any, any questions? I just want to read a nice clear report here. I've had men and cast reports before that just you know slap you with a whole bunch of numbers and you're not at all sure what you're looking at. And so thank you for sure. the presentation. Thank you. And um with the math scores going up, and we have the math club and the um it's been very well in the grant for that too. Is this data that we'll probably put into that grant and um, get this out to the right people? I don't know who's writing that. That is this, uh, Ms. Katrina writing that, or I know oh, they yeah. keep track of the data, and we have to, you know, a lot of kids attending. Um, can that can this be used there? Or the, I didn't understand the question. So the math club. Oh, the math club. The math club we started yeah. last year. Yeah. And we got this great improvement. Yeah. Is it directly indirectly? You know, it's difficult to say, but that data could still be used to help reinforce that grant that we're using already, right? I mean, if we can. That's a good idea. We can get this yeah. to the right people. Yeah, that's it's, a good idea. You know, I also really like the girls and the boys' math the clubs. Right, right. That's that's good. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
a good point. I'll make sure Ms. Regina knows about it. I'll see if there's a I'll so mention it. I just want to make sure that's okay. Just of course, no, anything yeah, can help. Yeah. And I don't know what effect the math club has on um, absenteeism, but another reason why our we substantially met targets was an improvement in attendance. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's throwing kids to school early and helping, then we can let her know that too. Other questions or comments? Great. Thank you, Dr. Randy. Thanks. Uh, let's have our first reading of the superintendency agreement. So, uh, you know, we've, we've seen this in draft before, even though we're calling it a first reading again because of the amount of changes. Um, one of the most significant change um, is one that the overall vote was four out of five to approve a new superintendent um, or renew a superintendent. And if you haven't had a chance to look through it, the addition of the flow chart at the end um, makes it, I think, very a lot easier to understand what we're trying to achieve here in the, in the longer written um, policy part. Um, the game plan on this is this is the first reading and the on the 28th we're going to attempt to use it and then before we vote so we're going to attempt to you we're going to all agree to go in i kind of said that we're just going to do this and, and we're exactly going to do this but um we're all going to go you know agree to go in and try to use it and and see how it works and then say well and then try to imagine um hopefully <laughs> imagine if there's controversy um and then we'll vote it at the June January meeting matter um, individually to approve it moving forward. It is the it is it's been you know it's taken up to a year or a year to kind of put together, um, but it is a significant thing because this is the document that will carry the committees through a transition of leadership. And if there is a disagreement, you need to have something that can navigate disagreement amongst people on who new leadership should be. Um, or change of leadership. So that's the that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Thanks everybody who's worked on that big project. Um, is there a reason since we're all having our first reading the first part of this month that we're not just going to vote on it at that joint meeting? Originally, I was thinking about just voting at the beginning of the meeting to use it, but then and I was like, well, to use it right for the meeting. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, there is no other, yeah. I mean, we could, you could do a joint meeting to vote if I request the meeting, but the, um, the idea was, I, I thought the idea was to use it and then see if there was a fix it in any way. You know what I mean? People may not like the process of it. I don't know. I, to, be, to be frankly, it's really, I've been driving this thing kind of, um, and so I kind of want to give it to the school committee to do it better than just drive it all the way through. And then it's not really going to be, I mean, it could be used for me, but it's going to be used probably for the next transition. So, um, uh, so that was kind of how I thought about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on the committee with yours and certainly, um, he has been driving a lot and done a lot of, of work supporting feedback from the committee, especially like the flow chart. She's very proud of you said that the frontier meeting sure. me today. It makes it and he had some good feedback that people really enjoyed that culture. But I I understand that he wants to give it back to us. And but I, my hope, you know, the committee was that we would use it with you um to work out any kinks. And, and so to do that, do we have to vote to use it? Or, I suppose we could start off with the, the meeting and say that we were gonna agree to attempt to use the, the draft. I think it's really important because we have you here this year and the next time we might need to use it to be farther down the road. Right. It's fresh right now. I, I would hope that we can use it. Right. You know, I can alter the uh, agenda to state back. The state back. Well, just to formally state that we're going to use the draft of that. I mean, I've been saying to each school committee, you know, this is um, they were doing it that way, but we put it formally that we vote as a joint, we vote that we're going to use it, and then we go and use it. We use, yeah, you know, so I think they're going to so. In those postings, every, all those postings are coming out a little bit earlier because uh, Jen's going to be out, so she's trying to get it all done. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so, so. 
Any other questions or comments on the superintendency agreement? Thank you. We have some new policies first reading. Yes. Um, the so the policy committee met and went through ABC. I think we're in D of uh, the policies. And what we did is any policy that didn't change in substance, but maybe had minor errors like referencing a new referencing a new law or um, you know changing uh, he she to they. You know, a lot of those kind of things were done, as you, as you remember, probably from the original one that we sent out. We said, you know what, if it's not a substantial change in the policy, we're going to just going to make those changes and load it up, make the changes and upload them to MASC. And then anything that has any kind of change, we'll bring back to the committee. And um, this is a portion, this is A through C. Um, and what we'll be doing through the year is be getting the policies to approve as we as we go through them so um the one you have in front of you aa is it's in the masc reference manual it isn't in ours but basically stating that the district has a legal status um we never had that and it just kind of it'd be good to add that the next one is aca which is non-discriminant on the basis of sex um adding language around um, sexual orientation and gender identity to not discriminate um, regarding sexual orientation and gender identity. Obviously, it's an important addition, and I think the school, we, we felt the school committee should be voting. Um, BGF is a new one um, that we didn't have, but it allows the, allows the committee to suspend policies if necessary. Now, what's interesting is that we have been using that policy, even though we didn't have it on the books. We suspended our policies when we, not, when we had to do something in urgency and not do a double reading. Um, so it makes me wonder if we had it at some point. So at one point, the policies were all uploaded to MASC. I wasn't part of that. I don't know what the process was of reviewing to make sure they all got uploaded. So if they're not up there, you know, I, I guess I could go back and try to find all the policy manuals to see you know, what happened to them. But um, we've been acting like we've had this policy. We need to get down the books. And the same thing with CHCA, the approval of handbooks. So, you know, the school committee has been approving handbook changes. Um, you especially see it more Frontier um, does it every year because uh, there's, there's more handbook things that change, that affect student life and discipline more so than elementary. But um, elementary really should be going in front of you this year on um, highlighting all the changes and including these changes. Um, so I'll have to, actually have to improve that because I don't think we did it this year. Um, and then the last one is BK is about school committee memberships to NAP organizations and like national organizations. It didn't make any sense. We read it several times, like, why did they have to have a policy for this? It's not in the MASC handbook. So we said, you know what, there seems to be no need for this. Let's remove a, a policy. So that one is to be removed. So um, this is the first read. You vote them next time. And then next time I will have another load, you know, small, I try to move in small batches to We'll be voting one and doing the first read on another. So we'll get work through it through. We'll, we'll take all year to get through it, but it's, I think it's better to do it in pieces rather than so you have time to kind of digest what you're changing in that kind of stuff. And the committee can have the time to go through it. And our next meeting, committee meeting, like early December or the 30th, sometime, sometime, sometime in the next few weeks. Any questions? Uh, let's talk about the school improvement plan, please. So, um, we are, the school council has uh, voted and recommended that we continue with the same goals that we had put into place at the beginning of last year. The goals focus on three main areas. One, social emotional approach to learning and discipline. And that is a responsive classroom focus goal. Goal two was based on curriculum and instruction, uh, standardizing and streamlining our supports and, and services for all learners across all grades. And the last goal was school culture and community, um, where we're sustaining a high level of community involvement 
through accessible, frequent, inclusive events and initiatives. So those goals um, are staying the same, yet um, the more or less the initiatives or some of the initiatives under each goal have have changed. And, and the reason behind that um is that we were we're building off of from from one year to the next of of all of the of these three goals the one area that had the biggest change to initiatives was goal two um curriculum instruction and so some of this has to do with the adoption of a new our new ela curriculum and what we're piloting or not uh, what well, we're starting to pilot for math and then um, will be fully in effect next year. So some of those action steps include the vertical and horizontal alignment through consistent curriculum materials and instructional practices. One of the our focuses uh, through our professional development calendar this year, along with our grade level meetings, has been allowing uh, teachers and support staff special education teachers to um, have an opportunity to fully access all of those materials and learn from one another. We've brought in uh, outside resources as well. Uh, I mentioned it before, but we've created a master schedule that has both an ELA and math intervention block across all grade levels. Um, during those intervention blocks, it allows us for students who um, might be receiving supplemental supports and services in one of those academic subjects to be pulled out during that time. So as they're not missing that tier one instruction, again, tier one is the universal instruction all learners in the grade level um, have access to. So um, this is really the first year we've uh, allowed our schedule to follow that format and it's really been met with a huge success up to this point. Um, we've also, the other action step was refining our multi-tiered system um, of supports, also called the Sunderland system of supports. And I presented this at our school council meeting September, October, one of, one of the first, um, one of the first meetings. And um, basically it is if a teacher has a uh, concern that's of a student, whether it's behavioral, whether it is academic, whether it is related a related service, social, emotional, um, OT, PT, speech, there's a set um, kind of flow chart and system of, of steps those classroom teachers can, can take uh, should there be any concerns. Um, we are using uh, data to inform instruction so we we have a few different data meetings that take place throughout the school year. Um, beginning of the year data meetings where we're reviewing all of the universal universal screeners. Those take place in in October, then early winter and end of the year. Then we also have regular RTI meetings, response to intervention meetings that happen every eight weeks. And so those the the data meetings are more whole group, whole class specific, whereas the RTI meetings, we are focusing on individual students. So, right, uh, a student is struggling in grade one with anemic awareness. They might have an intervention with our reading specialist for eight weeks. And then we use those RTI meetings to progress monitor and to see how everyone's doing. Those meetings um, involve a reading uh, specialists, math interventionists, and, and the relating service, related services, speech, OT, PT, et cetera. Uh, the other big change in that was implementing the universal screener, which I talked about. And then our special education team has been doing a lot of work um, around the shift to the new IEP, which is coming coming out at uh, the beginning of, of next year. So um, doing district-wide trainings, we are updating some of our processes and procedures ahead of time this year, um, so as to better prepare for, for that big big shift in, in how IEPs are, are constructed. 
Um, any questions about the the goals or the initiatives? And actually, the one other um, you'll notice in, in what I sent you the initiatives document. Whatever uh, was highlighted in in yellow, those are just updates that I provide to the school council of things that of changes or things that that had have happened since the last school council meeting. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. yeah. Questions or comments? You're feeling that, uh, how will you rate the school year so far, just in terms of you know, general sense of progress or general sense of? There is an overwhelming sense of, of joy in community that is there's an overwhelming sense of joy in community that is felt um, across the um, across the entire building. Uh, the the teachers of Sunderland Elementary School are very hard hard working. Um, they take a a team approach, and I and I truly believe that everyone really loves coming here on, on a daily basis. And I, and I think the kids feel that, and I think caregivers feel that too. So positive start. Related to that tonight at dinner, my, my family goes around and everybody says something they're thankful for. And my fourth grader today said, I'm thankful for school. <laughs> I wanted to just uh, comment on we are keeping, so I, I'm on the school council that, that worked on and approved this. We are keeping those three big goals the same. Um, and that, that that is very similar to the plan that was actually called out in the equity audit. Um, allegedly, for not focusing on equity, and I just wanted to comment that I feel like that was a very superficial reading of this this plan because it is very much focused on equity and just doesn't rely on buzzwords to do the work. I feel like it's a very equitable plan. The um, the focus, uh, or one of the focuses of the school council this year is that we're going to be doing a, a book study and on a book titled street data uh, next generation model for equity pedagogy and school trans transformation and um so we all have our reading assignments we're going to be meeting at the beginning of december um to to discuss um our particular chapters that we're covering but the book uh focuses on equity um, reimagining ways of learning, identifying their bar barriers, and um, making sure all voices in the school community are are heard. And an additional project of the school council is to send out a uh, develop a survey, kind of based on the information that we're learning from from this book to to the caregiver community sometime late winter, early spring. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so, thank you. So, I was on the school council last year and helped with some of the students. And I echo what Jessica said that we really worked hard, and Ben and his team really worked hard to encourage and, and involve diversity and equity in the school with all the projects. And then, the, the, just for note, people may remember we read the book um, Families of Power mm -hmm. the summer ago and had book reads on King. Mm -hmm. um, and I was involved with some of those too. You said um, to hear all voices. Is there anything in the book, and I know you said generally, or any thoughts about encouraging voices too? Because there's people who talk, these are, and oftentimes some of those families are families with power, are, share their input. But some of the families without power don't feel um, confident enough or comfortable enough to chime in. So there's, there's talk about that. Is that, is that, that clear enough? For a mask I mean, sure. Yeah, but that's the part that I always worry about because, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. voices are heard here for sure by you and your mm -hmm. team, and, and I think the frontier of home region. But do we, how do we get the voices that aren't speaking up to be to speak up and then do it? Yeah. I think that will definitely be one of the discussion points. <laughs> That'll be one of the discussion points for sure. Perfect. Thank you. I, just, I mean, I just from coaching all the youth sports, I see some of those families. 
who love their family so nice, but they're very um, um, appreciative and thoughtful of what the schools are doing for them. Um, but sometimes we could do more for them, but we don't know, we don't hear them yet. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you. So we're looking for a motion to accept the school improvement plan. And make a motion that we accept the sending of the elementary school improvement plan. Amanda, you're unmuting. I'll Any second. Any further discussion? In person, all in favor? Aye. Four hands. Amanda? Aye. All right, five zero it passes. On to committee report. Do you want to talk about the conference? Yeah, committee report, and then yeah, it feeds in the collaborative part too. So, um, yeah, the conference for someone new, and I, I do have friends there who are Darius and Ben that I ran into who've been there a lot, and I, I could see where some things could be done. For for me, fresh eyes. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I went to uh, one of the most important was chapter seventy. Shelly did that for you, just trying to understand. We had a great presentation on Chapter 70 by Tracy Novick, who is the regional field manager for our district. She's excellent. Um, I went to a session on the collaborative, and I learned a lot of things I didn't know. Maybe we, and, and, and I think I wanted to share more about collaborative once I debrief a little bit. But there, there's 24 collaborators in Massachusetts. I didn't know that. Five different regions. The Berkshires don't have one. And they tried to do their own regional. I went to Berk 12 presentation too about the, their attempt to regionalize, which failed because they thought that was really interesting in, in what they lessons learned from that. So I can't present too much. I just want to say that I really enjoyed it. I made a lot of contacts. Um, I met a lot of people from Western Mass, from also Eastern Mass and the Cape that are on um, school boards that are similar to ours. And they said, stay in touch and, you know, we talk more about things. We I made a couple of plugs for the regional or the rural school bill at a couple of different counties or workshops and people were really in favor of it. Um, uh, and, and then I also met Jason Frazier and spent some time with him who's the new He's the uh, president elect of MASB. And so he and I had lunch together and I have to talk about what his vision is and that the rural schools bill is one of the top two things that he's pushing for. And he brought up the fact that Massachusetts School committee group is the largest group of government employees in the state. Official. Officials, yeah. officials being 2,400 members. So there's a lot of power there. I didn't know I was going to present. So just... <laughs> okay. I also attended the conference. Um, I like the, the sessions on uh, the latest development trend in collective bargaining and legal development. Good to go and connect with uh, other school committee members from across the state. Um, since our last meeting, uh, I've also I testified on Beacon Hill. I went out to Boston and spoke about the need for the rural schools bill. Uh, Gateway Regional really showed up. They had probably a dozen people there, including a bunch of students, including a school committee member slash select board member who graduated from Gateway two years ago. I think he's around 20 years old, <laughs> so they had great representation. Um, I felt like the co-chairs of the Joint Committee on Education were responding really positively and seemed to understand that the rural schools bill really is a necessary continuation of the work of the Student Opportunity Act. Um, that said, we have no idea when they're going to report out on it. Um, until they do report out, they're still accepting written testimony. So if anybody still wants to get in your words about why this is important, um, the information about how to do that is all on ruralschoolsma.org. Um, could make a difference. You never know. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a very uh, unproductive by conventional measures uh, legislature we have right now. And I think I've, I've heard that they have passed the fewest bills of any state legislature in this current session. So it might take several sessions to actually get this bill reported out favorably and to vote at the full House of Senate. Um, Darius and I went to a rural schools rounds table at Mohawk last week. Um, did you want to say anything about that? No, go ahead. I didn't know what it was when, <laughs> right. when, I, yeah. when I agreed to go. I didn't know what I was walking into either. <laughs> so it, it was uh, 
Natalie Blay and um, a representative from Paul Marks' team. And uh, we had um, Ann Wilby, who is the new director of rural affairs for the state. Um, and then about 10 of us <laughs> were local officials. Um, and we didn't know what we were getting into, but um, it, was, it was a nice listening session. We heard lots of perspectives and the, the state level officials really sort of repeated back to us the important things that they had said. Felt like rural forces are being charged back. Those are my reports. Anybody else? Or just, yes. um, just on the capital stuff. Uh, I, you sent to the town the information about the first three items on our priority list. Uh, you didn't send the anything on the fourth item, um, which was the mini splits, uh, you know, of some quantity. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped in to see Jeff at town hall to just to check in on things and asked him. He said he talked to you about it and we thought we already had enough on the on the list there. Um, and my view, which Jeff seemed to feel very similar, was there's no harm in putting the fourth thing on there. Um, that it's and there's an advantage because number one, it's you know, there might be more money. I mean, who knows what else is going to be um, asked for by the department and so on. So there might be more money available. And even if there's not, it, you know, it, it gives much more exposure. So that the following year, you're, it's, it's already in, in people's mind. Um, and I was thinking about what would be, what I would think would be useful in terms of information to be presented would be, um, I guess, because I found it interesting, what the other three elementary schools have done so far, um, because that would give a sort of sense. Well, you know, they're all doing it, and it's not some sort of, you know, special thing we're asking for here. Okay, no, this has become the, the normal, and so we need to get those to program. Um, and so I think that providing just, you know, basic, you know, numbers of, you know, number of units, number of dollars. You know, for the other three schools, which gives sort of a boost to, to our case. And, um, you know, I guess that's about it. But I see no reason to hold back because we might just get something. And, and, and Jeff was feeling very much the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's been our whole, you know, all through the ARPA period, it was like, get stuff out and put it on the table. And, you know, it's like going back to when you know we've had recessions and the government says, "Okay, where are the shovel-ready projects coming out of the recession? We want something. We got the money. You know, what were you here for?" And and so, like another case here, you can get more money to now for capital stuff. Mm -hmm. So okay, okay, I can say enough. Too. I guess the other thing, yeah, what I was thinking also was part of not just what the other towns are doing, but how it's worked for them with the rebates. Okay, knowing that that's always unknown in the future. Right. It still gives you an idea of the kinds of things that are happening and, you know, makes it a more attractive and proposal. Right. Okay? Yep. That would be great. Can I ask something about the new date set? Did I want to, again, the conference, I talked with someone who said that Mass Save will also do schools. I thought it was Mass Save is only residential. Now, they said there's a number of call. Do we know anything? Have we ever done that? Ask Mass Save to come in and do a consultation? Yes, we, we're doing that. We are doing that. We, we, well, we're doing that right now in Frontier in Deerfield. Their buildings were just assessed. We're waiting on the report still. Okay. I, I didn't, I didn't, I just learned that I was only residential. I didn't know what schools were doing. So, good. Mm -hmm. so good. look at this building. This building was done with uh, a few years back. They did a Walk through for, I guess it wasn't energy savings, so we could probably get that in the closet. Yeah, that'd be good. Any other committee reports? Want to say anything about the collaborative? Uh, I said enough today. So okay. it's postponed. It's on there all the time, so I'll do that next time. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, wouldn't want, I have another meeting come up before our next meeting, so yeah, okay. Okay. there was. A summary from yeah. from Jeff here already, so if you can read through it in the packet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Superintendent support. 
So just to highlight, we, I don't received it, but the CPAC report was sent to everyone. I, I didn't get it. I had to get the link from Jen. But it, and also the link is in there. Oh, did, she the send it to, did she send it to Judy yet? No, I had to ask. We never got the CPAC report. Or they I sent did. the email to everyone. No, so you I didn't get it. Just so you know, okay, I didn't okay, get sorry. it. And, and right. then I had to go to Jen to get the, you had linked to a copy of it, but then that link was, I've got it now. Okay. So it didn't make it to us before. Okay, sorry. Um, no problem. They BCC'd it, so I couldn't see who got it and who didn't get it, sure. as yeah. I remember. I think that was good. Um, anyway, so th that was out, and just overall, they, um, they stated that there was no major issues and that they weren't going to be coming to the school committee because things are going well. So I guess that's good. Um, and I, I did say in the, after the equity audit um, review that I would have the equity, audit, equity plan for November meeting, it isn't ready. Um, so we bring it to the January meeting um, to present that there. Um, and then professional development day, I don't know if that, but you can read through that. We had on November 7th to review the decision stuff we did. And a reminder of the 28th, those that just gonna know if you can't make it. You remind me, is the January meeting a joint meeting? No. Right. Okay. So starting in January, we'll have those. We had, yeah. no, the change time will be six o'clock. The only meeting of having that evening is we start the budget season. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Peter. Yeah. I think we're about done, right? Yeah. I just have a question as to how locked in concrete we are for the meeting dates coming up in January, February. Those dates are set by you folks. Understand. So if you want to change it, bring it up here. So just strictly personal interest. Both the January and February meeting, this is there was a way of doing it. And the schedule, I realized, I looked at the schedule and the other towns and all this stuff and so on. And it, to me, if there was a way of doing each one of them a week earlier, it would be awesome. But if it doesn't happen, I would most likely be remote at one and the other one, I'm not sure. But this is all based on things that I might want to do with my life, but that's not guaranteed. <laughs> and so, you know, it's... I just thought I'd raise it. I don't need a decision now or something. I just... You know, at some point, I remember once when I was like two years back, we changed the meeting a week and mm -hmm. didn't seem to be a big deal, but I don't want to cause. I mean, I know you all got many more things to deal with than just this committee. You know, when we get to a week where you've got already three meetings, I'm not going to put a meeting. And if it doesn't happen, I'll deal with it. Just ask. You. So in January, that would put us to the first week of January. Right? Yeah, and that may be too early for people. I personally do that because I pull up my calendar. Which yeah. can't be shared with you folks because I have people's names and stuff on. Um, so it's it's working. We're still breakfast. So you want to move? Uh, we're scheduled January 11th, which is a Thursday. We're in here on Thursday the 11th. All right. I, I don't object to changing it, with, especially with this much notice. I don't know if Shelly feels like the first week of January <laughs> is workable. I don't love it, but yeah. I mean, I could do it perfectly fine a, a, a week later, too. It's just that's like a, a, you know, over the weekend, and we, it fits in with something we wanted to do, and it would mean, not sure where I'd be, but I ought to be able to get it. Get remote access, so that was not a big deal. The February one, that's why I really got the January one's not a big deal. February one, again, but I'm not sure I'm going to be doing you know, a way doing this stuff. But it would be nice to be able to be away doing it, and I'd like to sort of see what the possibilities are. The February one is uh, February 7th, so a full week earlier is January. Yeah, Thursday the first. Right, so right, yeah, it is. there's limited days you can move it to. Right. Right. If you're gonna do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, Mondays right. is, is whatever, and nobody wants to be on Friday. Right. Unless they have. So um it would be Thursday the first, but that you know, that gets too early for shall That's our snow date for international night okay. and eight to uh, mm -hmm. Well 
then I'll just see. And then the following week, I, I have a meeting on Tuesday and Thursday with Valentine's Day. Yeah, and then we get too late. And then you have winter recess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We couldn't meet on Valentine's Day. We've done it before. We have. <laughs> <laughs> we we child. Child. We no, that actually, that actually, what I'm thinking there, that doesn't, that, I mean, I would hope, I was, We'll give it thoughts for trying to be a way for enough time that would kill it for the 14th too. So that it's just, you know, I'm just feeling out there. If it's not possible, it's not possible. I guess it look, it's looking like it's not really possible. Sorry, um, because that is budget season and you are very experienced with budgets, what is the appropriate way for you? To give to get information, and get class, particularly in February, if you can't call in remotely, can. Oh, can I'm very good. I'm there? very good at sending <laughs> emails to <laughs> family, but I'm going to. Could we do that in advance so she can address it to all the rest of us and we get to hear the answer too? Oh, yeah. So and to comply with open meeting law. <laughs> right. I think we should already stayed away from February one, but I would hesitate to go in there because that's when the governor's budget comes out. It's going to come out on the 30th, that week of yeah. 29th. Yeah, no, at least yeah. the way it is. That's, I mean, that's part of the reason we're asking was to find out, you know, if there are concerns. And if they're confirming as well, we got to pay attention to those concerns. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, I guess, you know, it's, it's early, but at some point this winter, there will be town caucuses for people running, you know, for, for new terms up in my term is up this year. And my intention is to not run for election, just so you know. So, of course, I'm too damn old. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I need have vacations to go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm getting super. <laughs> And I, 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 I quit work at a certain point because it was like a tax business and I did not want to make mistakes. Okay, this is stuff that matters. We don't want to be stupid. It's coming. It hit me this way and that way. <laughs> uh, Megan, you're also up for re election. Do you have thoughts about your intention? My, I mean, my intentions are always to put as much as I can into this, but. I am not decided entirely, but I, yeah. okay. <laughs> Thank you for the update. <laughs> uh, we have no need for executive session. We simply for motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 You have first and second. All in favor. Uh, Got four in person and Amanda. Amanda. <laughs>